dose of the word that will enrich and bless your life so that you can stay salty. So this whole week, we are going to be talking about walking in forgiveness. Q brought an amazing word yesterday with tons of scripture explaining to you what forgiveness actually is. And I'm so glad that she did that because I'm going to be talking to you about the difference between the Webster Dictionary of Forgiveness and the Biblical Dictionary of Forgiveness and how to practically walk that out in your daily life. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the share button as you begin to hop on here. Share this broadcast so that your family and your friends can be blessed. I'm going to go ahead and get you guys loaded up here on my laptop so I can see your comments. So give me just one second while I do that. Um, this is an amazing week to be talking about forgiveness because it's Thanksgiving. And I know, uh, I'm sure some of you have been to family events before where you have either not forgiven somebody that you have to now be around or you've not been forgiven by someone that you have to be around and it can make for a really awkward situation. So I'm really happy that we're talking about this because I know it's going to make this Thanksgiving um, that much better for you because you're going to now know how to walk in love. Hello, Robert and Donna and Jessica, people from Ocala, Florida and Dallas, Texas. We love you guys. Thanks so much for being faithful watchers and sharers. Um, we're going to hop right in. And I'll be periodically looking down to see what your comments are. So if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that, just go ahead and pop those up there and let me know where you're watching from today. All right, so the Webster Dictionary of Forgiveness is the action or process of forgiving or being forgiven. Now, I don't feel like that the biblical definition is really defined that lenient. You know, if we understand true biblical forgiveness, we see that forgiveness is simply love. It's defined as love. I want you to listen to this. Love is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. That's found in 1 Corinthians 13, 5. See, keeping a record of wrongs is actually harboring unforgiveness. Love forgives. Forgiveness isn't a process like the Webster Dictionary was trying to say. Forgiveness is actually just a simple choice. It's a choice. We love because he first loved us. 1 John 4.19 tells us that. We love because he first loved us. Jesus is love. Jesus' blood is what makes it possible for us to be forgiven, for our sins to be forgiven. Walking in love is walking in forgiveness. And so that's the topic this week. How to walk in forgiveness. Walking in forgiveness is actually walking in love. I'm going to share with you a handful of scriptures here. 1 John 4.16 says, So we have come to know and to believe the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in God, in, I'm sorry, whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. John 3.16, of course, we all know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. 1 John 4.8, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love. We cannot say that we are Christians, which is defined as being Christ followers, if we don't love, if we don't forgive. Psalms 86.5, you, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. He is a good, forgiving God, abounding in love. And if we're to be like him, right, that is our sole job as a Christian is to be like him. Then we have to abound in love and forgive easily, just like he does. Proverbs 17, 9, love prospers when a fault is forgiven. I just love the, the way that these two things are, are really just, uh, they go hand in hand. You honestly cannot say, I love you. Even, even if you say like, I, I, I love you as Christ loves you. Like, and I might not like you, but I love you. No, you can't. You can't say, I love you and then not forgive somebody of their fault. You literally cannot do that. Dwelling on a wrong. So Proverbs 17, 9 says, Love prospers when a fault is forgiving, but dwelling on it separates close friends. When you dwell on a wrong, you're not walking in forgiveness. You're not walking in love. You hear Christians refer to um, their, their walk with the Lord as a love walk, meaning you receive this amazing love from the Father and then you dish it out to, you, to others. That's 
That's your love walk. What you receive from the Lord, you give out to other people. Meaning, you receive this amazing love, and then you give the love out. Walking in love and unforgiveness is truly the basic guidelines for Christianity. Hatred stirs up quarrels, but love overlooks insults. That's Proverbs 10, 12. How many times have you insulted Jesus by the decisions you've made? Where you've gone, who you've been around, what you've done, what you've not done. He went to the cross still knowing that, that we would all be born into sin. Romans 5.38 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Walking in love is walking in forgiveness. And hang on one second. I'm having technical difficulties here with my, my notepad. The point that I'm trying to get across to you, all my notes are gone, so now I'm just going to have to go for it. Um, we have to learn to look over other people's faults. Make room for their mistakes. That's what the Word instructs us to do. Choose to love them anyways. Extend what we've been given. You know, all of none of us deserve what we have. None of us actually deserve the forgiveness. Everything that happened on the cross is not something we deserve. But it was given to us anyways. So how can we look at a wrong someone's done to us and hold it against them, come hell or high water, without walking in that love and walking in that forgiveness whenever it's been given to us? Hi, Zama, man from South Africa. Hello from over there. Hang on one second. Let me see if I've got any questions I have not gotten to here. Uh, we love you guys. We love our Salt Shaker family. Let's see here. Who else do we have? Sean. Good morning, Pastor Sean, of course, from Texas. Every Tribe Missions. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, if you have not already shared, please take some time to go ahead and share this daily devotion. Pastor Mallory. Yes. We're to be like him. That's right. Abounding in love. All right. So I don't see any questions. Thank you for putting up the scriptures, guys, for what we're talking about today. I appreciate that. That's so helpful for people who are um, watching the replay because then they get to see um, those scriptures. So I really appreciate when you do that. Hang on one second. I'm going to get my notes right back up here and we'll get back going. So Jesus still showed his love to us while we were still sinners. So who do we think we are to not extend that forgiveness? Remember, your life is not your own. You know, you were bought with a price. So we actually don't have the right to be offended. We don't have the right to hold on forgiveness. We don't. And the question this whole week is what is walking in love? It's a choice. I'm making it very easy for you guys. This devotion is easy. It's a simple decision to extend what we've received from Christ to others. Some of Jesus' last words were, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. We have to overlook people's faults. Colossians, uh, Colossians 3.13 says, Make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Forgiveness is a choice just like not getting drunk is a choice, just like not murdering somebody is a choice. I mean, I'm going a little extreme here, but it's just like not worshiping another God. You know, the decision that we make to live a holy and a righteous life is a simple decision. It is one small decision after another small decision to live a life pleasing to God above all else. To live a, a following His Word. And guys, His Word is super, super clear on loving and forgiving others. Mark 12, 30-31. This is amazing. Listen, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second, right? They were asking, what's the greatest commandment of all these commands, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no greater commandment than this. So you could look at it like walking in forgiveness is the greatest commandment. Because loving and forgiving, it goes hand in hand. It is one and the same. It is one and the, th the same. God is love. Jesus came down, died on the cross, knowing we were still sinners. Jesus is love. So 
So walking in forgiveness is the greatest commandment to us as Christians. And if you're watching this devotion today and you've never been able to receive that love, you don't know what I'm talking about when I say what you've received, you have to dish out. If you want to receive that forgiveness of sins and being able to walk as a new creation, living in love, walking in forgiveness, abounding in all that God has for you, then you can do that very simply today. All you have to do is call the name of the Lord. The word of God says that whoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I want you to just take a quick moment right now. And if you feel your heart beating fast, if you feel like I want that forgiveness, I want to be able to experience that love, all you have to do say, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, wash me, cleanse me, set me free. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe that you've risen from the dead and you're coming back again for me. Say, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven and you're on your way to heaven because you just asked Jesus into your heart. You've just received that amazing love. And now, now, because you received it, you can make that simple choice to give it to somebody else and to walk in forgiveness. Walk in forgiveness today. You might have to decide uh, with the same person in five minutes to do it again. It's a constant daily decision. And if you're out there right now, and as you've been listening to this devotion, you realize that you've been harboring unforgiveness towards someone else. Make that decision. Make that decision today to to overlook their sin, to cover it with the blood of Jesus, to walk in love, to walk in forgiveness toward that person, to love them. Bless them. Go out of your way to bless that person. When they've done you wrong, go out of your way to do something good for them. Bless them. The Bible tells us to bless those who curse us. Do something great for them. I'm telling you, it frees your heart. Forgiveness, I mean, you, every time I talk about forgiveness, I always say this. Joyce Meyer said it. It's just so amazing. She said that when you um, do not forgive somebody, it's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It ruins you. So make that decision to walk in forgiveness and be freed from those chains of unforgiveness. I believe that you've gotten the courage today as you've listened to the word. The word doesn't go out and come back void. So I know that you are out there and you're getting the courage to make that decision today. We love you guys. Remember, tomorrow morning we're going to have another devotion on forgiveness. So this whole week you get to just get doused in the word of God toward this. So if this is something you've been dealing with, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So make sure you're faithful to get on here every single day and listen. And if you've been being blessed by these devotions, there's a way for you to partner with this ministry and sow into this ministry. And if you do, uh, I think we, we've talked about this almost every day. Um, if you give a gift of $15 or more, you're going to get a t-shirt. If it's $30 or more, you're going to get a long sleeve t-shirt or um, a tumbler. A coffee mug it has the salt shaker logo on it. Don't be that vine. Um, the long sleeve shirt has don't be that vine down the sleeve and then the salt shaker logo here um, on the chest. So they're awesome shirts. Um, and mugs that will keep your drinks cold or your hot, whatever you prefer. And we want to bless you. We want to bless you with those. If you give again um, for an amount of $15 or $30 or more, um, in the description section below, you'll see all the different ways to give. And you'll also um, see our email there. If you do give of those amounts and you want to receive those gifts from us um, as a way of saying thank you, you need to send us an email to let us know what gift you want. If you don't send us an email, you know, if you do a cash app or whatever, it doesn't it doesn't let us know so send us an email let us know what you want because we want to say thank you you're you're not only enabling us to get the word of God out to you every single day from all different parts of the world um, but you we're also feeding the hungry we're sending meals out to feed the hungry doing what the word of God's called us to do and you can be a part of that everything this ministry does goes into your heavenly bank account so we love you thanks for partnering with us thanks for sharing this broadcast we'll see you in tomorrow morning